All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how not to um, anticipate jobs, right, basically. Uh, so this friend asks me, Yo, Dari, hey, hmm, you've been playing with Arduino, right? Right, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, see, look, like I have this machine that creates an event and I need to record it, and but I need the recording to start 30 seconds later. Can you do me a delay? device kind of. So this would be basically a digital delay line of sorts. Right? You probably need like 50 times the diameter of the planet circumference maybe even to delay 30 seconds but anyway you get the point. Um, and I said yeah sure no problem. Yeah, pfft, yeah I can do that no issues like how much is it gonna take? Oh yeah like half hour you know like pfft, no worries. And yeah, I ended up taking like, I think I should be an easy six hours of coding and well, building this wasn't like super much, but was still like two or three hours. And yeah, basically this takes like a ground and five inputs and has a ground and five outputs, right? And unfortunately I did not have time to um, to get any input protection so right what I did say is connect both grounds first because uh, it's basically uh, shoving out the protection towards the user put my email on and yeah I got a label machine so kind of went at it in this project works fine and so I'm quite proud of how this turned out and uh, looks kind of funky with the weird wires Anyway, so most of this video will actually be the uh, coding part, so uh, we'll uh, head on to that now. Alright, so here we are. Uh, the code is actually pretty simple, so this guy isn't too deep into coding, right? So he's more of a math kind of engineering guy with like five page formulas with like 70 Greek symbols with indices and uh, so right this had to be as simple as possible and it's always nice right to have like a pretty user-friendly device right widget when you shell it out to people that haven't made it right so anyway so that was the goal and um, the code is pretty simple right so technically all you need is to include uh, this library right you actually do have to um, Right, if you want to use Arduino, you have to save it into your libraries folder. So here it is. Uh, keep also in mind that this is my first library, and also this had to be done as quickly as possible. With basically, it had to work. Right, very few restrictions <laughs> were imposed. Right, so yeah, certain. Yeah, so do let me know in the comments if I've done something super wrong that you should never do and shit like that because I really don't know and I'm curious to hear. And But yeah, this is the context that this was developed under in, I think, in. Anyway, so basically what you do is you include this, you define a trigger listener object, right? In this case, I'm calling them um, listener 1 through 5. As you've remembered, as you see in the video, there's five inputs, five outputs. Um, I've already mapped them out, right? So basically, you could just leave them be, right? These declarations are could just always stay here because if they're not used, they're not actually going to get declared and use memory and all that. Then in the setup, right? So the code that runs just once at the boot of the microcontroller, what you could do is uh, basically set them set the listeners right so the channel one listener in this case we have set to verbose waveform mode and let me show you guys what verba verbose waveform mode looks like let's actually make this big first um where do i have this so i think i have it in here all right so this is how verbose waveform would look like excuse the motorcycle guy outside Hopefully he will be done shortly. Anyway, so let's analyze this, right? So in this case, the uh, the blue wave is the trigger, and the red, or in this case yellow, I mean I can't choose this, or whatever color this is. Um, I can't choose the colors, or I don't know how to choose the colors for the serial monitor plotter. Uh, but anyway, right, so basically these are the three types of events we have we have to take into consideration, right? 
So initially I thought that all we'll have to deal with is like a small trigger, like half a second, 100 milliseconds, two seconds, right? Then we have to wait, right, from here to here, time delay, right? So this would be our delay, and then this would be our output time, right? As it turns out, the, uh, the wave generator he has, right, it's an actual like water wave generator. Uh, the controller for that actually outputs a super long signal, right? So our trigger is actually longer than our output, right? And also, just for completeness sake, uh, the trigger could actually have a falling edge inside the interval under which we are triggering, right? So anyway, so these are the... I'm sorry, I can't do a live demo because uh, I'm not at home. I have absolutely no Arduino here, but I do have these screenshots and they should suffice, right? So this would be the output of the the plot of the input, kind of, and this would be the plot of the output of the Arduino, right? So you set the interval for which the output is on, and as you can see, it is the same in all cases, and the input is controlled by whatever is connected uh, into our widget, right? So we have the three cases, right? This would be the first, second, and third. As can be seen on the right, I don't think there's a lot of point in uh, going too deep into this. Suffice it to say, I've initially written like a super simple, minimal type code, no libraries, no garbage. And I don't know, I did manage to do it, right? I Basically, all I could do is this, and then this would freak it out, right? This, this would freak it out, and then this would constantly re-trigger it. And I tried to modify it, but at some point it became clear that a lot of crap was right. It needed complete redoing, right? So, which is, I kind of wanted to avoid that, couldn't do it anyway. So this would be verbose, verbose waveform, and then, for example, if we'd comment this out and leave this on, this would be verbose text mode. Um, do I have any porn up here? I do not, actually. It's pretty fortunate and also rare very nice uh, so exactly same shit on the right and this would be the verbose text mode right so if you feel like reading just take a look at this and um, yeah I'm also pretty proud of how this came out right pretty useful right I mean why not right so it's basically this is the variable declared right so this is actually a variable this is just for sanity checking the stuff. This is the system time in millis. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much, yeah. You could take a look at this, and this would be the first case, second, and third, right? And uh, yeah, pretty proud of how this came out. The guy was pretty happy, right? And uh, yeah, so basically, there would be a third mode. Technically, you could actually say uh, listener listener one dot silent, but this is the default, so you technically don't have to read. You could actually have it in this mode, and after, for example, 50 seconds or like 500 seconds or 30 days, you could actually silence the listeners so that they don't spew out stuff over the serial line. I don't know why you would, but you can, right? And that's the, I don't know. Pretty weirded by the artifacts that pop up in uh, in this uh, Java-based editor, right? This Arduino editor, it's pretty weird. Anyway, uh, the loop is also extremely simple, right? All you have to do, right? And you could definitely do include other functionality, right? Uh, if you wish, right? Like control an RGB LED or have a... You could extend this project, and I really wanted to, but... Again, time constraints. You could uh, extend it with an encoder and an OLED display or any display so that you could set this up at runtime, kind of. This way, right, you don't, you'd have to basically recompile and reflash the entire program of the microcontroller every time, which is, uh, it's suboptimal, but, like, he's going to do this, like, 50 times at most, and then it's going to be like that. It's going to stay like that, right? And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do, right? To ensure that the logic of the listener is, is being executed, you basically have to call this run, and this will just keep the juices flowing, kind of. This would basically, right, if you wish, be the heartbeat heartbeat of the, 
of my library. And again, I don't know if this is how you do it. If there's more elegant ways, I mean, technically you could maybe say run here and just have it run, but I, again, this is what came up and uh, this is what I first thought of and this is basically what I've done. Right, so let's uh, quickly look at the header file and again, I don't, I'm not sure if this is how you're supposed to do it. Please let me know if you've reached this far in and have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. Although, let's be honest, no one is listening to me now. Anyway, so first off, when you do a library, you will uh, need a include guard. So basically what this does is, if I have this program, right, this uh, sketch, including trigger listener, and then I include, for example, some other library that also, for some reason, includes trigger listener, then you'd have this include happening twice in different locations of the program and then as part of the compilation linking uh, toolchain type deal you will at some point get an error right because you will define the same shit twice right? which is bad and this is basically a very elegant and the de facto way of avoiding this right so if not defined right this is a compiler uh, directive I think even a pre-compiler I'm not sure anyway so basically, if trigger listener dot h uh, underscore h is not defined, then we do all of this. Then we first of all define it, and then do oh my god. Then we do all of this right up until here, right. If it is actually defined, then all of this, all of this will be skipped, right? Because we already have all this functionality included somewhere else, so it is pre it is compiled alongside the rest of our shit, so we can access it. No need to do it again. Same with Arduino.h. For example, if I'd include Arduino.h here, it would still work because Arduino.h for sure has one of these include guards, right? So it's just good practice. I mean, technically, in this case, you wouldn't need it. Then I defined the modes, and uh, also this would be kind of something I've... I'm not sure if anyone does it like this, but I kind of feel a lot... I sleep a lot better at night doing this, right? So basically you have three state variables, let's say, right? And I do enjoy having them defined this way, right? So you all also have one space for one more where all are ones, and in this case what happens is if just one bit is flipped right because if you have like one zero one and two and this bit gets flipped which is incredibly unlikely for sure right then you'll already be in the different mode and some very bad shit would happen I think I have lost an espresso machine due to some similar error right so in this case every it is extremely unlikely that we flip all four bits and land in a correct state, right? What is likely to happen if is some random bit flips, then we'll be in a weird state, right? In an unknown state, and we'll just go into the default case, right? Which will basically probably reinitialize it to zeros. So this is just like a super safeguard, super tinfoil over your head type type approach. But anyway. So now we define the class, right? the class that we have used here right so this name is this name and it has a public section and a private section the public section right contains these functions right these uh, prototypes trigger listener which is the constructor and you can see we have two of them having the same name so we are kind of overloading this um, this function do note that one of them has one parameter less right so depending on how many parameters we give it here, it will know which function to actually use, right? And these are very nicely commented, so I'm not really going to go into a lot of details, right? So when the names are pretty clear, so yeah. Uh, run is basically this heartbeat type approach. Uh, silent is technically redundant, but why not? Verbose text would put it into this uh, spew out all the happenings and waveform would basically print the stuff with tabs so you can uh, easily plot it out. And this is what I'm unsure of, right? So these are the private variables. So technically you can't you can't say listener one dot uh, trigger time trigger time is equal to five 
right? You can't go in here and modify this. This will only be modified by the actual library, right? So that's that's how that's done. And I find it pretty weird that you declare the variables in the header file and not in the CPP file. So I've uh, just read that you can define them as external and then define them here as well, but that's also not super helpful. So anyway, right? Anyway, let me know in the comments how this is properly done. So this is basically the logic behind what is happening right behind this entire program all of it is abstracted away through this library right all the happenings are here right so let's just quickly go over them um, and this you could do a bit more elegantly defining them here right there's this, file, there's this thing but anyway I, I think it's a lot readable a lot more readable this way and compilers are so optimized these days that I don't think it makes an actual runtime difference right so anyway so whenever we start a trigger listener, what we have to do is uh, define, technically you don't have to do this, right? Uh, define the input pin as an input. It makes no difference if you do it or not, at least in uh, the Arduino nano boards or all Arduino 328P using the Atmel 328P boards uh, chip. However, the output is incredibly crucial. So take this as a warning, right? I've spent, I think, five hours at some point in my life debugging a program, right, a sketch where I hadn't defined the output pin as an output. And if you have no load, right, if you just have the 50 mega ohm uh, multimeter load, you will see this pin actually work. However, any load you put onto it, it has absolutely no driving force. Setting it to output makes it work correctly, so that is definitely needed. And then basically all that we are giving it, right, so this variable, oh my god, the bike guy, Jesus, and he is going away though, all right. So this input pin would be, for example, this, right, and it would go to this dot input pin, which would mean the input pin variable of this object that we are currently inside of, right. So basically this a0 right this is actually a number right the the arduino environment will change this to like a five or some shit right uh we'll go to the to the input pin variable of the object listener one right so i hope i hope that was clear enough right so let me say it again because i think i botched it right so let's go with this right so you say output pin is five right so this 5 gets put in here, output pin is 5, right? Then output pin, this output pin refers to this local out declaration of output pin. And then that gets assigned into this dot output pin, right? Which is the output pin variable, the output pin variable of the listener 1 object. So listener 1, listener 2, listener 3, all of them have all of these variables, these uh, state keeping housekeeping variables right good and in this case in case we don't give the threshold uh, we just set it to 200 which is meh whatever uh, just a decent value and if we do actually declare it separately uh, define it se externally then we do pass it along and verbosity mode is always set to zero you could change it later by calling these functions right? And so let's go over run right quick. And this is a lot of crap in here, right? So, ah, Jesus. So basically, um, if we print stuff out, no matter if it's the uh, waveform or the, uh, the words, we're going to be wasting quite a bit, spending quite a bit of time printing the stuff over the serial, right? However, if we're silent, this run will get executed quite quickly and so I'm setting a half a millisecond delay just in case the analog to digital converters don't have enough time to like settle down and stuff I don't know I've heard it's good practice doesn't hurt so meh why not right then we go over uh, into the verbose mode right and I want to update this every hundred milliseconds 
right? So millis gives us the system time, right? So this basically gives us a number, a uint 32t, so a 32-bit unsigned value that basically counts in milliseconds upwards from the system boot, right? From boot time. So five seconds after boot, this will return 5,000. So this is how this works. It's kind of global time. And it refreshes every 43 days or some shit overflows. And this is why you need the absolute, right? Just every 43rd day, you could have something weird happening here. And so this basically guards against it. Um, exactly. So basically, we just uh, keep track of when we've updated. So we can uh, do this every 100 milliseconds. Um, and we basically just use right the the input state we just read it and we either assign it one if it's above the threshold or zero if not and I multiply it by four just to make it look better on the graph right because otherwise the problem you run into is these lines would overlay right over the the graph lines and that's just terrible right and uh, yeah that basically fixes that and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all, right? T is tab, right? So if you want to print different, if you want to print more than one thing, uh, have have the monitor plotter display more than one variables, you need to separate them via a tab. So it's basically, in this case, it would be basically four tab zero new line zero 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 tab zero that kind of deal. All right, so that's pretty pretty clear. And then the rest, right? I mean, I'm gonna publish this on Git, GitHub, right? Uh, it's it's pretty pretty well explained, uh, pretty well commented, I would say, right? Can we make this smaller to have it fit? Yeah. So so yeah, basically this is all the states you need. I think it's the minimal amount of uh, state keeping variables to be able to cope with all the three types of. Uh, of scenarios right and uh, yeah that's that's pretty much all this does right and if verbosity mode is text then we print the stuff out if not then not um, yeah that's that's pretty much pretty much all of it right elapsed time would for example be uh, how much time has passed since trigger time and when this is equal to the delay time then uh, we'll activate the output right we also have to keep track of, of uh, how the output is, right? And uh, if the output is high, you can actually read this, right? So only on the, the AVR uh, architecture can you actually digitally read output pins, right? And they will return the state that they're in, right? So ARM, I think, does not allow this, which is a damn shame, but uh, anyway, you could definitely just have a separate external value uh, variable that would just clone the state, but that's always a pain in the ass. And uh, yeah, basically this is where we turn the shit on and off. Um, I always uh, mirror any output with the LED 13, which is the onboard LED, right? Um, yeah. This is uh, pretty self-explanatory, right? If you go through it slowly, read the comments, this should be fine, right? So it just takes a long, long time to, to speak over all this stuff, right? And I don't know, my voice is pretty annoying, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, and the rest is simply just, right, setting this uh, state, uh, this verbosity mode variable with the... Um, with the uh, numbers defined here, right? So mode silent is 0, 15, and 240. So this would be 0, 15, and 240. And also we start the uh, serial output, right? This basically sends some, some initialization sh shit over the serial bus, right? So the serial monitor knows that a stream is, is coming in and all that stuff. And yes, yeah, so that's pretty much all of it. Um, if I somehow forget to upload this to Git, just let me know in the comments. I'll put it up there as soon as possible. And um, yeah, have a good one, guys.